Our next topic is biotechnology and DNA technology. Uh, here are some learning objectives for you. So you're supposed to learn to compare and contrast biotechnology, genetic modification, and recombinant DNA technology. Also identify the roles of a clone and a vector in making recombinant DNA. So here first an introduction to biotechnology. By definition, biotechnology is the use of microorganisms, cells, or cell components to make a product. So basically, biotechnology is product-driven. Here are some examples of products um, that are commonly produced using biotechnology. That would include foods, antibiotics, vitamins, and enzymes. Recombinant DNA technology is the insertion or in modification of genes to produce desired proteins. A good example for this would be the manufacturing of recombinant human insulin and other hormones, uh, protein hormones, using E. coli, for example. And that's been done for some time now. Uh, these uh, recombinant products um, are identical to the human insulin. And it was a big advantage because in the old days you had to go to the slaughterhouses and extract um, the insulin from um, pigs and um, cows. Uh, which is of course not completely identical to humans and would cause allergic reactions sometimes. So um, the old method of extracting the uh, pig insulin from the pancreases of pigs from slaughterhouses, um, it's not nearly as good as using recombinant DNA technology where you're giving E. coli the genetic information to make human insulin and then have E. coli mass produce it with recombinant DNA technology. Um, here's an overview of recombinant DNA procedures. Um, so you need to be able to manipulate DNA. And uh, one vehicle that is great to use and in transferring genetic materials, a, a vector in general. So a vector, think of it as a vehicle that will transport your DNA to where you want it to be. Uh, vectors, small vectors include plasmids, larger vectors um, could be as large as artificial chromosomes, but either way, a vector is a vehicle. And these are self-replicating DNA molecules that are used to transport foreign DNA into a cell. The uh, most convenient one is definitely the plasmid, and we'll take a closer look at that. A clone, by definition, is a population of genetically identical cells that are arising from one cell. And uh, basically, if you're generating a clone, let's say you're inserting a plasmid that contains the information for human insulin into E. coli, then the E. coli cell that has picked up that plasmid now starts to uh, copy that plasmid every time it's reproducing, and that will be a clone of E. coli that has now the ability to produce human insulin. Let's take a look at what a typical genetic modification procedure might look like. So you're typically starting out with a plasmid, a vector, and uh, vec these uh, plasmids, they come actually from bacteria. Bacteria keep extra chromosomal little circles of DNA. Think of it like a flash drive where you have some genetic information on it. Some of your files are on there basically and it's easy to share because it's such a small circle of DNA. So plasmids are generally uh, naturally found in bacteria and you can isolate them there and then you can work with the plasmid vector so here's your plasmid vector it's a circle of dna and now you're changing it using biotechnology you're taking the dna from another organism something of interest a gene of interest they're calling it here and you're putting it into the circle so you have to cut the circle open right here and then you are inserting that piece of genetic information into the plasmid now it's recombinant dna recombined and now you're putting it back into bacteria right here and now this circle here of dna contains the genetic information for whatever gene of interest it was here and here's some examples given of what you can do with this uh, technology uh, you can here make, for example, corn resistant to glyphosate, the Roundup. So there will be Roundup ready corn. Um, nowadays, the, that kind of corn is probably more prevalent than the natural unmodified corn. Uh, soy is also modified heavily, genetically modified in the United States. Uh, you can also um, 
engineer bacteria to where they have the ability to clean up toxic waste. Uh, so here's some toxic waste, and then you can insert um, enzymes that would have the ability to clean up that toxic waste and detoxify it. You can insert that into bacteria, and then they have the ability to clean up this waste. Here's another example where you're using amylase, cellulase, and other enzymes um, to prepare fabrics um, for clothing manufacturing. You can also produce dyes that can be used for clothing manufacturing using biotechnology. And here's another example, human growth hormone um, that's treated here, I guess, to make this kid grow taller. So here are some tools of biotechnology, the learning objectives. Uh, what's really important here is to understand how you can manipulate DNA. And so you need to really learn how to, what restriction enzymes are and how to use them, how they can be used to manipulate DNA and make recombinant DNA. Uh, the vectors, we're going to get in more detail in the plasmids and how they are very useful. And then another very important procedure is PCR, the polymerase chain reaction, the DNA copy machine, um, because everybody's using this these days, and it's a very useful tool of biotechnology. So um, here's some terms that you need to know. Selection, of course, when you're manipulating organisms and biology, and every, everything is not going 100%. So you can't expect that 100% of your bacteria will pick up the plasma that you wanted them to pick up. So that's not going to happen. So you need to select for those organisms that have picked up the genetic recomb recombinant DNA that you wanted it to have. And so you need to select for those microbes that produce the desired product. A mutation is uh, a change in genetic material, and so there um, you can use mutagens to accelerate the rate of uh, mutations and then select for a microbe with a desirable trait that you found through mutations. Site-directed mutagenesis is basically targeted mutagenesis where you're specifically changing um, a gene in an organism. So let's start here with restriction enzymes. Uh, think of a restriction enzyme as a molecular scissor. You are having the ability with a restriction enzyme to cut the DNA strand at a specific sequence. So most of the time, these restriction enzymes will recognize six nucleotides, a recognition sequence, and then they use the molecular scissors to break the double strand of the DNA. It's usually not a clean cut uh, straight through, but it's uh, a sticky end cut, which makes actually life easier when you're trying to put things back together. And I'll show you this in a, in a minute. So... Um, Restriction enzymes are ultra useful. Now, where do we get them from? Uh, they are naturally occurring in bacteria because uh, bacteria, they pick up kind of promiscuously, um, randomly DNA from other sources. And uh, so they try to protect themselves from foreign DNA that they were randomly picking up. And um, that they use restriction enzymes to destroy foreign DNA that they by mistake picked up. So for example, bacteriophage DNA that got into the bacterial cell, uh, they just cut it up and sort of um, neutralize it that way. Um, bacteria, they tend to methylate uh, their own DNA so that they protect their own DNA from digestion by restriction enzymes. Now again, these uh, restriction enzymes, they create either blunt end or sticky end cuts. And the way this looks like is, so here would be the double strand of DNA. And if I use a blunt end cut, that will be straight through. And then I have two pieces that are having blunt ends. The sticky end cut is, let me extend this over here. The sticky end cut would be that I'm going in here and doing just a single strand cut at the DNA right here, then I'm moving across and I'm cutting right here so that the resulting pieces will look like this. So this would be the double strand of DNA here and then over here it will look like this when I'm doing a sticky, sticky end cut. So um, sticky end cut, that will be this one right here and blunt end, that's a straight through cut right there. Here are some examples of very popular restriction enzymes. 
Um, personally, I've worked a lot with um, BAMH1, with EcoR1, with Hindi3. Uh, they come from bacteria because those bacteria, they have the need to protect themselves from foreign uh, DNA that they may have picked up. And so uh, in general, the enzyme name is related to the bacterial source that it first came from. So, so for BAMH1, there we have the bacterial source Bacillus amyloliquefaciens. So the B here comes from Bacillus, the genus, and then the species name amylo M right here. Or let's take um, E. coli R1. Maybe this is the most popular restriction enzyme. This one comes from E. coli, so Escherichia coli, and uh, the E from Escherichia, and then Co from coli, and then R1 comes from the restriction endonuclease number one. And then here, let's use the last example right here, Hindi 3. This one comes from Haemophilus influenzae, and I think you get the idea, same thing. Um, H here from the starting, the first letter here, and then influenzae, Hindi 3, mix Hindi 3. Uh, the recognition sequence, these are um, for BAMH1, EcoR1, and Hindi 3. They're All three are recognizing six nucleotide pairs. And then BAMH1 will recognize GGATCC. It will cut between the two Gs right here and then cut through here and come out the other end, creating a sticky end, of course. And EcoR1 recognizes GAATTC and it will cut between the G and the A right here and then move down here and cut here again, creating another sticky end cut. Uh, this one will uh, only recognizes GGCC. This is not a popular choice of restriction enzyme, and it will create a blunt end cut because it will go straight through. Now, Hindi 3 is very popular again, uh, recognizing a 6 nucleotide sequence AAGCTT, and uh, it will create a sticky end cut uh, just like this. Uh, note that um, all of these recognition sequences are palindromic sequences. That means they read forward and backwards exactly the same. So GGATCC on the bottom here is GGATCC. Or equal R1, GAATTC is on the bottom strand right here, GAATTC. So it's all palindromic sequences. Okay. Now let's take a look at how these restriction enzymes can be used to make recombinant DNA. So we're having a piece of DNA, the purple DNA, right here, and um, we're using the restriction enzyme EcoR1, which recognizes GAATTC. We have two recognition sites right here on this purple strand of DNA, and so that means if you're using EcoR1, it will, of course, cut both times. It recognizes every time this... Um, uh, equal R1 uh, recognition sequence, GAATTC. So uh, the restriction enzyme will go ahead and uh, cut down here, as you can see, and cut down here this way. And um, then this it will produce two sticky end cuts right here. Now we have this pink DNA that was also cut with EcoR1. So here produced also two sticky end cuts, GAATTC. Um, and now we're ready to put these pieces together, so recombine the purple DNA with the pink DNA. And now you can see here that um, the purple pieces fit perfectly here with the uh, pink pieces by base pairing rules too. And now you can put the, the purple DNA here, match it up with the pink DNA, create a circle. The only thing that's left to do is that you need to seal these edges right here. And for that we have um, DNA ligase, well, which you should think of as molecular glue, to seal these um, nicked pieces here of DNA, and um, then you're done. So down here we have recombinant DNA, where we have now um, put new pieces together, the purple DNA with the pink DNA, that previously were not put together in that way. Let's take a look at what uh, vectors are. Uh, think of them as vehicles. They carry new DNA to desired cells. They must be able to self-replicate. Uh, probably the most 
easy to work with vector is definitely a plasmid. You can also use viruses as vectors. Uh, in recombinant DNA technology, probably the plasmids are the most popular vehicle. And basically, um, these uh, shuttle vectors, they exist in several different species and can move clone sequences among various organisms. Again, um, plasmids originally come from uh, bacteria and they can be modified easily. Now here very briefly, uh, this is probably the oldest um, plasmid vector, PUC19. Very simple kind of plasmid, a simple circle 